Hello, hello. I wanted to share with you how I am painting this loose and fluid, wonderful field of, I call them bluebells or irises, anything that's a purpley flower that's in a, like a field growing kind of wild. Um, you could also use pink or yellows. Um, I think an orange flower would be pretty. It's just a loose little spring time feeling paint yourself calm sort of um, painting. So I thought it would be fun to paint spring since we are getting close to spring and I'm feeling very much like I want spring. So um, I'm painting on 5x7. This is 5x7 watercolor, 140 pound watercolor paper. And I just have some simple paints. I have my yellow, my lemon yellow, which, you know, spring is all about cool. I have my sap green that I love. I have my beautiful ultramarine for my blue, blue, blue sky. And then I have my purple for my flower, for my flowers. So let's get started. I always start with the sky first, and the sky is very simple. I like to um, wet it a little bit, and it's okay that I have a little bit of purple on my... <laughs> on my brush that's not gonna hurt and I'm gonna go about a third of the way down I you can go halfway down if you want but the sky should be about a third of the way down if you see me all right and then I just take my ultramarine and you might add a little bit of purple if you wanted to and I'm just gonna paint like a strip and I'm gonna let it kind of run I'm gonna let it run down and get the extra puddle and I'm going to do that again, maybe right here, and a little bit right here. I'm just going to let it run. And that's how I get my really simple, beautiful, watercolory sky. Now I might just add a tiny bit of purple. That's actually going to be more purple than I need, but that's okay. The water will kind of take care of it. And I might leave it leave it alone I always say <laughs> just let the water take care of most of it and you'll be just fine okay I'm loving that so I'm going to leave that sky alone that might be a little too purple right here which is not what I wanted so I'm going to smooth that out with a little bit of blue and so there's the sky yes it is wet I don't tape down my paper because I don't feel like I need to um, and now we can start on the field and I did did just a tiny bit of yellow you don't need very much and I almost want to go right there's a little bit of white space right where the blue is and that's where I'm I'm just kind of like letting that um, I'm, I'm locking in that that white space with this yellow and the yellow it's just going to be kind of like a little buffer because I'm going to add some more all right now we're ready to paint some of the grass. I'm actually going to get more of my yellow and I'm just going to do a little bit of splattering on my paper because splattering is the best. Okay, now, now I want to see where my purple flowers are going to go. And for this I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller brush. Uh, this is a size 10 brush, 10 round. Um, pretty it's a smaller round brush uh, any round brush will work um, the purple and the yellow are actually going to act as like the, the the they're they neutralize each other but it's such a light wash that it's not and we're adding a lot more of the purple than so it's gonna and what I like to do is I also like to add in some of this blue because it's not all purple it's a little bit of blue too. And I'm just thinking where I want my flowers. And especially where there's no, where there's white space, that's where I'm putting it. There's a lot more. And now, you, I want it to be very loose and fluid and, um, this is just a fun way to paint, I think. All right, I'm going to clean my brush. And now I'm going to take my sap green. I got my sap green and I got my blue right here. And I'm going to make a nice little 
blue green sap green thing and I'm just going to start adding some of this grass and I don't want it to all be the same color I want it to be a lot of variations and right now I'm just kind of getting the feel of what I want it to look like it doesn't have to be perfect in fact the looser it is I think the prettier it can be And I want to leave some room for uh, maybe some more purples. So I, I'm just, it's a give and take. What do I want more of? What do I want less of? I need some more purple up in here, I think. Um, just. And it's okay if it bleeds a little bit. Um, you see my painting it is going to dry a lot lighter so this is just like a first wash and I don't love how this is getting into the sky per se it's okay for a little bit but I don't need it so I'm going to clean off my brush and just sort of erase it it'll dry a lot lighter and you won't really notice it um, but I didn't want the yellow into the purple to make a muddy color all right, here. And I'm going to actually add some splatter. There we go. And if I get, get splatter into my sky, you know what to do. You use your water brush as your brush with clean water and you erase it. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Look at that. It's going to look beautiful. Okay, I'm going to add some splatter down here with some green. That's really pretty. Okay, now I'm going to add some more of this ultramarine. A lot of this is just a give and take. Like once I get some splatter on, I'll, like the, the flowers just kind of come, you know. And since I'm thinking of bluebells and irises together, I'm just, I don't know, it's just a fun, loose and free Thing. that turned out to be more of a stem and that's okay okay now I got some really pretty things going on down here I'm just gonna add more of that purple and just add a little bit more and it's quite all right that your painting is this because we're gonna once this part dries a bit can add some more lovely things to it. All right, I don't want to go overboard with my flowers. I think this is really pretty good. Um, now, I think if we just let it dry for a little bit, we can get some beautiful line work in. So let's work on the clouds for just a tiny bit more. This paper can can take a beating. I'm just cleaning up my splatter. You could have. I could have put my hand over the sky and just splatter. Um, I didn't. You could have. Um, I'm going to go back in and add some more of that blue, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to go start at the top. And I'm just going to work my way down. Um, this is just a, just a little bit of blue. I probably, it's more like a tea like consistency. Um, it's not, it's not potent with with blue. Um, like it's not thick. It's a light wash. And the hardest thing for watercolor painters is to know how much water and pigment ratio. And there is no, there is a couple of rules. Um, if you look on my palette, I have this. I would call this like if if it beads up or on your palette if it just looks thicker that's more like milk this has a lot more water I would call that tea and then butter um, a butter consistency would be like like almost melted butter so like you could see the paint on the paintbrush you see, yeah and that would be like a butter consistency so um, I like to I almost 
always start with a tea-like consistency, so a very light wash. And then I move into my milk consistency, where it's just a little bit darker, but it'll provide a punch. And then my thick consistency is that butter-like thickness. So that's kind of the different consistencies. Okay. I'm going to... Still needs to dry a little bit. Um, we can probably work on it a little bit though. Let's let's try. I'm gonna go into my butter and milk like consistency, and I'm actually so this is it's not translucent as much. I'm gonna add there. Okay, that gives a really pretty green. I'm going to go ahead, so what I like to do is I like to um, flick my brush just like this. Um, and we're going to get a whole bunch of colors. We're going to leave the purples alone, and then when, when it's completely dry, uh, we'll come back in and we'll, um, we'll add more of that form to the flowers. So if you just want to just flick. Here, and you don't want to use the same color all the time. You want a lot of variation. And I see, sometimes I see where I need to go, and then sometimes I just kind of go with it. Um, yeah. And you can also use some of this yellow with this green. And that's a really pretty color. You see, like, especially at the top. And I always like to go lighter to darker, so yellow is always my lightest value. Um, so of course I'm going to try and go with yellow first and then head out to the darker colors. But oh, this yellow gold is so pretty in the springtime. It just like screams screamed, uh, spring to me. And I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow right there. That's going to make that purple pop. And then, oh, that blue is really pretty right there. And um, sometimes with the yellow, I'll go straight into like the, that buttery look. And I'm okay with that. Um, but what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to lose that translucency um, looseness quality. But this is coming together quite nice. Um, I'm going to... I don't really want this yellow into that purple. Oh, that's so pretty. I chose these colors because they are, um, uh, purple is the complementary color to yellow, and, um, and then, you know, you got that pretty blue, that ultramarine blue that really adds a lot of, um, granulation to the sky. Um, yeah. Alright, so a lot of this is just playing and and growing your grass. I like to say grow because a lot of times as painters we are growing a painting and that's how I view it. All right I see some white right here and I don't necessarily want that white right there. I'm going to add a little bit of this blue. It already has and it's just a wash. But I just don't want it to be completely white. So I'm just adding what is already on the paper and adding to it. Because we'll come back and we'll we'll make those flowers look a little bit more like a like a bluebell or a something. Now I'm okay with that white space and I'm okay here, but I know that I can also add a lot more kind of light wash, this light greeny wash that we've just kind of made, <laughs> you know, it's just on your palette. Um, yeah, you want this variations of color. This is such a fun place to play. I'll make wildflower pictures all the time. And I see this little purple dot right here. If you see some purple poking out through the yellow, don't add extra color to it. We can always, once it's dry, we can add that purple back because um, purple is the darkest value. 
Oh my gosh, this is just making my heart so happy. Every time I sit down and paint some flowers, I just, my heart is so happy. <laughs> All right. I, I'm afraid that if I do much more down here, it's just going to look funky. So I'm going to let that kind of dry, so to speak. I'm trying to decide if I want any more greens up here. I think I will. Just some faint little grasses that says we have. I have some. I have some unruly grass. If you come to my house, I have a whole bunch of weeds. <laughs> no, that's not true. They're all dead. But they'll come back this summer and I'll think, oh man, I really should do something about that. <laughs> Oh well, I think sometimes weeds are pretty. Now what I'm doing is, if I have a puddle of water, I'm just soaking it up. You get that sometimes. There's nothing, I think, any of us, you know, it, it's inevitable with watercolor. You think you have enough water on your brush, and you do, and then it puddles up. And I don't necessarily want it puddled up. I'm going to clean that line up a little bit. I'm not feeling it. Okay. Now I can let that dry a little bit more, and I'm going to zoom in for you. It's so pretty. There's the there's the little fill. Now it's perfect the way it is, I think. However, um, I also know that there's a little bit of room of improvement, maybe up here. Um, the further away you go, the the less you're going to see in the details. But I think we can add some details in here here. I love these colors that are meshing well together. Um, this one needs a stem. There's like no stem, so I want to make that a little bit more prominent. There we go. This one needs a stem, and it's going to go that way. And I'm almost, there's a lot of yellow, so I'm using a lot of blue and a little bit of green. Um, that one, that one needs a stem, but I don't want it to make it look like and that one needs a little stem. I might, that one looks like it needs something right there. A lot of it is just fine-tuning what you already created. I feel like there should be something right there. Maybe. And I don't want it... I want my lines to be loose, so... Like, I, like that just looks like a V, so I'm going to erase a little bit. There. Clean water does the trick. I'm going to go back with my... Basically, it's mostly ultramarine blue. It just... Once you get that yellow on, the blue because it's translucent, um, it looks more green. Um, but I can also add a lot more depth to the grasses, to the stems. But man, what a beautiful, beautiful floral we arrangement we got. Okay, let's work on these purples, these flowers right here. All right, I'm going to use my, my purple and my blue. And I'm just mixing a couple of the ultramarine. Here's my ultramarine and here's my purple. And I'm just kind of getting a good, like this is pretty blue. We'll see how it looks. I might, but, and I don't need a whole lot here because there's a pretty, it's pretty, pretty, uh, the form is there. Um, but here I probably need a little bit more. I'm going to clean up my brush, and I'm just going to let that watercolor kind of move around. Same thing with this. I'm just going to, with a clean brush, I'm just going to move that water just a tiny bit around. You can kind of see that I just made that form a bit more. It's going to dry a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, now I'm going to go into my purple purple. <laughs> 
with a little bit of blue. I don't think it needs all that. And I'm actually going to make like a cluster of flowers right here. Maybe. I don't want them to all look uniform because I don't think flowers should. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more dots here. And this is all, you know, from the splattering. I just splattered what I thought needed, but the splatter is helping me know where I where I need to go. All right, there's purple right here, and there's blue right here. I'm going to just add, it's going to kind of transition into this purpley blue thing, and I think I'm going to make a cluster of flowers. And I'm just, like, doing like a, like a little shape, like a V shape almost, an upside down V shape. And then I'll do this on the side. I'll do a side V. Like Sometimes it's easier to say, oh, I can paint a V instead of a flower. You kind of forget that you're painting flowers. Because um, if you are really into it and you're afraid, just say, oh, nope, I can paint a V. I know how to paint a V. <laughs> Mind over matter, right? All right, this is getting lost right here. I love that granulation, but I feel like it's just a little bit lost, so I'm just going to add a little bit more to that. Oh my gosh, this is this is looking really pretty, almost like a iris. Um, yeah. I think I need some purple right in here. I like it painting irises. It's kind of like has like upside down V with a circle on the top. I don't know. I know there's lots of ways to paint irises. This is just my way. Um, I love the Van Gogh's iris field. I've studied that a lot. All right, so this one has purple, but I have a lot of purple going on. I'm going to just add a little bit of blue right, right there, and just to give it a little bit more shape. And then I'm going to clean out my edges so it doesn't look like I just painted a B there. I think that works. And I'm going to add a little bit more blue here and blue right here just to give it some form there. All right. And now, because I did that, <laughs> i got to go back in and add some more. And so... Uh, sorry, the other thing I see is this is way too uniform. I'm just going to mess up my edges a little bit because I don't want it to look like I just painted everything. I want it to be loose, so I'm going to clean up these edges by loosening up those edges. Hopefully that makes sense. Like I'm, I'm almost blurring some of the edges so it doesn't look like I just painted them. Loose and fluid watercolor is all about Oh, I would say going with the flow. Sometimes going with the flow means you have to kind of clean up the edges a little bit, just so it doesn't look like I was taking my time painting. And if you're like, okay, this isn't working, I can lightly, I'm going to Do some more splatter right there. I think that's going to help. And I think we are almost out of time. And so to finish this off, I think I would just maybe add a little bit more of that ultramarine right down here to really get some more of this. And I am going to call this done. I don't know if I can really do much else. And yep, I'm going to call it done. So I hope this uh, helps you and I hope you have fun painting some spring florals. They're so much fun to paint, especially the loose and fluid ones. Happy painting!